Constraints specify relationships between sketched entities by defining their location, shape, size, and orientation which determines the design intent of the sketch. There are two types of constraints, geometric constraints and dimensional constraints. Geometric constraints control sketch relations between entities and define the orientation of sketch entities on the sketch plane. Dimensional constraints determine the size and distance between sketch entities. There are three main steps involved in creating a sketch. First, create the sketch profiles as explained in the previous video. Then, add the needed geometric constraints. This defines the shape of the sketch profile. Finally, add any dimensions to define the size or distance between sketch entities. Defining geometric constraints before inserting dimensions ensures the desired shape is maintained throughout the sketching process. Notice after sketching a profile, most of the sketch entities are blue. The blue color indicates those sketch entities are still underdefined, meaning the location, usually relative to the origin, the size, and the orientation of that sketch entity has not yet been specified. Blue sketch entities can be dragged and repositioned on the sketch plane. As geometric and dimensional constraints are added, and the location, size, and orientation of the sketch entities become defined, the sketch entities change color from blue to black. Black sketch entities are defined on the sketch plane and cannot be dragged. When all the sketch entities of a sketch are black, the sketch is fully defined. A fully defined sketch means the size, location, and orientation of all sketch entities in the sketch have been specified. Typically, sketches are desired in a fully defined state because this indicates that the needed design intent of the sketch is determined. There are several techniques to add the needed geometric constraints to sketch entities. As you sketch, Onshape tries to infer what is intended and adds constraints automatically. To help Onshape understand what you are intending, hover over an existing entity to wake it up and infer to it. If you prefer to skip the inferred constraint, select the shift key as you click the sketch entity. This ignores the inferred sketch constraint and does not add it to the sketch. You can also add geometric constraints after the sketch profile is completed. All the sketch constraints are located on the right of the sketch toolbar. Select the needed constraint and then pick the sketch entities that should be related with that constraint. Note, you can pre-select the constraint or you can pick the sketch entities first. Pre-selecting the constraint allows you to add several instances of that constraint to different sketch entities consecutively. To learn more about each constraint type, hover over each icon in the toolbar to reveal the description on the tooltip, and notice which constraints have keyboard shortcuts for quicker access. The coincident constraint forces two or more entities to share the same location in a sketch. This constraint makes two lines collinear, or two arcs coradial, or lines up two points. It also places points on lines, arcs, splines, curves, and other entities. The concentric constraint is applied to circle and arc entities as well as cylindrical faces and constrains them to the same axis. The parallel constraint restrains two or more lines to be parallel to one another, meaning they do not intersect. The tangent constraint forces a line or arc to intersect another circle at exactly one point. The horizontal and vertical constraints force a line to be oriented in that manner on a sketch plane, or forces points to maintain a horizontal or vertical orientation to each other. The perpendicular constraint creates a right angle between two lines. The equal constraint forces two entities to be equal in size, whether it is two lines, arcs, or circles. Typically one of the entities will be dimensioned with a dimensional constraint as well. The midpoint constraint places a point directly in the middle of a line or arc. You can reveal constraints applied to an entity by hovering over it with the mouse, or to display constraints in the entire sketch, check the option in the sketch dialog to show constraints. Constraints can be removed by selecting the constraint box and pressing delete on the keyboard. Blue constraints indicate the related entity is not in the sketch, while white constraints indicate all related sketch entities with that constraint are in the active sketch. Hovering over a sketch constraint dynamically highlights which entities are related by that constraint. Dimensional constraints determine the size of an entity or the distance between entities. This could be a length, angle, radius, or diameter dimension. To define any of these dimensions, simply select the dimension icon in the sketch toolbar. You can quickly access the dimension command by using the keyboard shortcut D. The sketch tool is smart and adds all dimensions to sketch entities dependent on the type of entity or entity selected. To define a length, click on a line once with the dimensional tool selected, then click again to place the dimension, key in the needed value, and press enter. Clicking on a circle or arc in the same manner places a diameter or radius dimension respectively. To add a dimension placing a distance between two entities, with the dimensional tool selected, click one entity, then the second, then click a third time to place the dimension, key in the value, and press enter. The same technique can be used to create an angle dimension between two lines. Dimension values can be edited by double-clicking on a number and keying in the new value, then pressing enter. They also can be removed by selecting the dimension and pressing delete on the keyboard. Both geometric and dimensional constraints are necessary for sketches to become fully defined. 
Fully defined sketches with black sketch entities indicate the design intent has been determined by the way the sketch has been constrained. If any blue entities remain, then the sketch is still underdefined. If you apply too much information and add too many constraints that might contradict each other, Onshape cannot solve the sketch. Red entities and constraints result in an overdefined sketch. To troubleshoot an overdefined sketch, focus on removing any red constraints that are not needed. It is important to fix overdefined sketches before moving to the next feature, as this can affect the regeneration of the feature list. Defining sketches with constraints is a vital step to produce the correctly shaped and sized part.